So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we finally have an exciting one with a new iPadOS beta update. Apple just released iPadOS 15.4 beta 1 to all developers to test out, see what's new, see if we got any new features and things like that. And we did get a bunch of new features, especially compared to 15.3. 15.3 was mostly just performance improvements, you know, bug fixes and squashes versus this one, we're getting some new feature sets. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And yes, we will be going over universal control because we finally have it available. I did have to put my Mac computer, I have a M1 MacBook Air baseline model, and I did have to actually put it into the beta program, which is something that I normally don't do. But for this demo, for this universal control demo, I had to actually do it. But we're going to touch on that in a little bit. We'll have timestamps in the bottom if you guys just want to skip to that. But we're going to go over everything from iPadOS 15.4 Beta 1, see what's new, see what's been fixed, and see if there's anything worth kind of sharing with you guys. But let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. We're gonna pull up the iPad screen right here so I can show you guys exactly what's going on. So first off, let's go into the settings. Let's go to see the build number, see exactly what we got going on in terms of the actual build number. Let's go into the about section, click on 15.4. You can see that we're on 19E5209 lowercase h. So again, this is the first beta. We have the lowercase moniker h, so we're just gonna keep going down all the way until we get to a, and then finally that RC edition. Now, there is rumors that Apple's going to have a spring event, and that's when they're going to release this to the public, so we still have some time. I'm thinking about eight weeks in terms of longevity for this beta program. We're probably going to get a lot of iterations because of the fact that we got a lot of new features that probably need to get touched on, need to be improved during this beta period. And then in terms of size of the update, it's around five gigabytes, so make sure you have at least 10 gigabytes of open storage in order to get this installed. I did not take a screenshot, but I did have to actually delete a few things from the iPad because I only had seven gigs, and then the iPad didn't let me update until I cleared up enough storage in order to get it installed. I'm happy that Apple does that for you and lets you like, hey, you don't have enough storage to safely install this. We don't want to ruin anything. So make sure you make enough room to get this installed. So that's what I did. Ended up making about 15 gigs of extra space, and then I installed the update, so we're good to go there. Now, in terms of what's new on the iPad, there's a bunch of new things that I did want to talk about. So you might have seen maybe on Twitter, on social media, that there's a bunch of new mask face ID unlock features. Unfortunately, if we go into the settings for the iPad Pro or for iPad OS in general, it seems like face ID with a mask is actually not a feature on the iPad Pro. I guess Apple assumes that most people use their iPad inside, indoors, at a desk, more of a computer type situation and they're not really like walking through New York City with their iPad out. So they figure, hey, we don't need to add that feature to iPads, but I wish they did add it, or at least I wish they added the glasses feature because iOS 15.4 beta one did get two new face ID features and that's face ID with a mask and then face ID with glasses. Now the mask I understand because usually I am indoors and at a desk and using it like a computer, but if somebody's wearing glasses, especially reading glasses, I think that face ID feature should be added onto there. But again, it wasn't added. So just wanted to give you guys a PSA because I know a lot of people were excited about that face ID feature coming to iPadOS, for now, it's not really there yet. Maybe Apple with iPadOS 16 will tout it as a new feature, just like they did with the app library from 14 to 15. The next new feature is Apple actually announced 36 or 37 new emojis that can be used inside of iOS and iPadOS. So this, they did add 37 emojis. You can see that there's a couple over here, like the splash looking one, the hands up here, this weird like dotted one. I think they added like a, a slide in here too. So there's a bunch of new emojis. I'll leave a link down below if you guys do want to check them out. The, I think there's an article by Mac Rumors that lists every single new emoji, but just be aware that there are new emojis. It's not going to be something life-changing, but it's something new that Apple did add into iPadOS 15.4 beta 1. The next new thing that I noticed within iPadOS 15.4 beta 1 is if you guys can see on my screen here, we have a brand new widget. Now, I'm surprised that they actually brought this over because I saw that they did bring it to the iOS 15.4 update. But the reason I'm surprised here is because you actually don't have the wallet app built into iPadOS. If I type in wallet, the wallet app doesn't actually exist inside of iPadOS 15 or just iPadOS in general. So the fact that they still were able to add the widget into iPadOS is actually really, really nice. Now this is the only size widget. You can actually customize it. If you long press on here, you can edit the widget and talk about the period. So if I want to do like a monthly period, I can do that, move it over. And then you can see that on a monthly period, it'll show me how I've been doing per week. So overall, I like to have this visual up here just to be aware of what's going on with the Apple Card. Now I do want to reiterate, this is actually for Apple Card. So it's not a wallet feature, it is for Apple Card. So if you have like an American Express or any other Visa or MasterCard or Discover Card, this won't actually show up. You need to have an Apple Card and be using an Apple Card for this, to, for this widget to appear. Another really cool one that came to iPadOS 15.4 is actually if you go into settings, if we go into control center, you now see that we have a new control in here and it's called keyboard brightness. So the ability to now 
increase the keyboard brightness. So we now have the ability to increase the keyboard brightness or decrease the keyboard brightness directly from the control center, which is finally an easy way to do it. Because before that, you actually have to go into the settings, go into general, go to your keyboard, click on your hardware keyboard, and then from there, you could actually do the, uh, the brightness for the keyboard. Now, I personally never touched that. I'll just let the ambient sensor on the iPad determine how bright my keyboard was on the Magic Keyboard. But now having the ability to do it directly from the control center is actually really, really nice. So I welcome that new upgrade from Apple. A couple other features that were in the settings is actually if we go into settings, if we scroll down to the notes option, we now have the ability to change the gestures. So if you go down and go to quick notes, go to corner gestures, we now have the ability to use our finger to not only swipe from the bottom right, but also from the bottom left and change up exactly what it does. So before these gestures were only available with the Apple Pencil, but now inside of the note settings, we can actually use our finger to get the quick note feature out with that finger, and then also take a screenshot with your finger from the bottom right hand corner. So adding those gestures for people that don't use Apple Pencil and don't wanna spend $130 just to have these two little shortcuts is a welcome addition. And also inside of the developer release notes, apparently we, now we have dual sense controller support, which means that finally like the rumble packs inside of third party controllers like the PS5 controller and the Xbox One controller, I don't own those controllers, so I can't really test it out, but apparently Apple is enabling that feature, so developers now just have to take advantage of that and give us some rumble pack control, which I really hope does happen because that does add a nice sense of realism when playing video games on the iPad Pro. And then lastly, one small one that I did notice is if you go into your Apple TV settings, you now have the ability to do device preferences. So basically what that is, is that it lets you customize what your next up playing is. So normally when you're watching a show, it'll just show you the next episode, but if you wanna change something, something like that up so you can show sports scores, use your play history, up next display can either be a post art or a still frame of that episode. So just a little extra customization when it comes to the Apple TV app, which is always a welcome addition. And now finally, let's change up the view and let's test out universal control in real time. I'll probably have a separate video going in depth with it, but in this video, I just wanna show you that it does work and see kind of how it works as well. And then we'll have another video showing how to set it up, how to make sure it works perfectly and all the ins and outs and nuances about it. But let's get out of this view and go to that view. Okay, so let's get into this universal control thing, everybody. So you can see that I have my baseline M1 MacBook Air over here. We're on Mac OS 12.3, I believe it is. So we'll go to the About This Mac. Yep, 12.3 Beta 1. And like I said earlier in the beginning of the video, I normally don't put the betas on my Mac OS computer, but I had to do it just to try this out. And then make sure you're on iPad OS 15.4 Beta 1 and higher. And I believe this is not exclusive to the iPad Pro. I think any iPad that you're running that can run 15.4 Beta and higher, you're good to go. But basically like all I did was put these two next to each other and then this little icon started to glow and you can see that link keyboard and mouse to iPad 3 and literally from one minute to the next, all I did was kind of know that it was there. It's literally crazy, insane how well this is working. So again, all I did was put it next to each other. I didn't go to any settings on either Mac OS or iPad OS. This is kind of turned on on its own. So all you really need to do is hover your mouse. You can see my mouse is right here. Hover it to the left to wherever your iPad is, give it a second, then you can see that it gets recognized, keep moving it over, and now you're in iPad OS. So there is my mouse moving. I'm using the keyboard, or I'm using the trackpad from my MacBook Air. And then also you can see that when that did happen, on the top right corner over here, that little icon did light up. So now let's see, I'm over here. Can I move it over here? Yes, I can. So as you can see, I'm moving everything over here. Let's open up a Safari tab. Let's go to ESPN, we'll click that there. This is so crazy. It's insane how well this is working. And then this is just a beta one, so I can't imagine how much better this is gonna get. But again, look at that. I'm using my iPad Magic Keyboard to control what's on my Mac OS computer. So now what happens if I grab this, can I like move this over? No, nah, you can't move it over. <laughs> Wishful thinking. But if I, again, if I move this over, what about the iPad gestures? Yeah, so three fingers for all the multitasking. As you can see, we're moving from side to side, then come over here. Then everything kind of works as advertised. Like it's still, it works how it's supposed to work on Mac OS. It works how it's supposed to work on iPad OS. So now if I move this over, let's open up a Safari tab over here. Open that up. Let's go up here. ESPN with this keyboard, press enter, and we're in ESPN. This is crazy. So now in my opinion, I'm gonna use my iPad Pro as my main hub to control all these monitors. So my full review, I'm gonna test out universal control with external monitors, with this being in clamshell mode. But in this situation, it seems to be working perfectly. So let's get out of this view and finish up this video. So that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, we got a bunch of new features and I'm sure we're gonna uncover even more as the days go on. I'm gonna make a video just going over universal control as the days go on, as I get to play with it, experiment a little bit more with it, see what its capabilities are, see what its limitations are and things like that. And then I'll come back and report to everybody. 
And also we're gonna avoid all the battery talk right now because I wanna make sure I put the iPad through its paces. So maybe this weekend or early next week, we'll do an overall follow-up video to 15.4 beta one. But overall, very, very stable. I just put it on, maybe wait a second, see what everybody says in terms of stability and making sure that it works correctly. But overall guys, universal control, it's the real deal. I think it's the real deal and I'm glad Apple finally brought it out to us and it's not like air power. But again, that's gonna do it for this video. Leave a little dolphin if you guys made it to the end right here and if this was useful to you guys. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, Apple, you done good. You done good with that universal control.